Welcome to Boomcast, the official podcast from Boombox.io. I'm Music by Lucas. And I'm Fabio from Noise. Store, organize, and collaborate like never before. Boombox.io is the new home of music collaboration. Also, don't forget that Boombox.io is giving away $500 of studio equipment. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. And comment below, you can comment anything. But the question of the day is, if money was no object, what would you get for your studio? What would you have in there? Today, we are with the super talented, fantastic producer and content creator, Sides, AK Sabrina, who is based in? Las Vegas. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So I am a singer, songwriter, producer, and now content creator and educator. Um, I started off singing. I graduated from Berkeley in 2012. And the first thing I did was get a job on a cruise ship singing on the high seas. <laughs> so I was singing in the um, club band for about a year and then moved to New York City and was singing in like professional like wedding bands and event bands. Mm. So did that for a number of years and was basically just like singing. Um, and then I was building a girl group to go on cruise ships nice. in like, 2016. And that was going to be like my business, my, my big business. Mm. Um, we were supposed to do like a bunch of shows and then eventually like cast other girls in the shows. I spent a lot of time and money, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears building that project. And we got gigs, but it was like of May 2020. So as yeah. you know, everything yeah. shut down in March. Gigs were gone yeah. for ages. And in the meantime, I just started learning how to produce and also post on TikTok. And that's when like everything changed. So yeah. by the time the gigs came back, I was already like, I'm 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 good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to run we around and go on cruise ships anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and now I get to just like work by myself, whereas that project I had to work with, you know, other women. Right. So yeah, so that's pretty much my story in a nutshell. It's just random how I landed on this career if it wasn't for a global pandemic. Uh no, I just love the story and it's very unique and I love how recent it was and I've seen you grow. Uh specifically I've I've seen your like I I remember seeing you first come onto my Instagram feed and being like, wow, this is really cool. I remember showing Lauren, my partner, being like, this is this person's really talented. Um, and then just seeing your following start popping off and continually getting recommended your videos and then seeing you working with brands and all this stuff. And uh, it, it must be exciting going through that process, especially so quickly. It sounds like you've always been kind of entrepreneurial minded though, which is really cool. Um, and I like how you're just open to flexibility to be able, cause you know, you, you don't, you, that's how it has to kind of be in this industry is you have to kind of be open to it. And it's so funny how like one goal that you have can completely shift to another goal and how like, that's okay. Like you don't have to stick with, I mean, you didn't, you didn't say like, you know, ride or die with this girl group. I'm not switching anything. You were like, I'm going to switch. And you even started producing. Like, why did you start producing? Uh, what was that like inspiration? I'm just, well, I'm really bad at like not doing anything. Like I need some sort of project, you know, yeah. I didn't have any work. I was stuck at home. Um, my boyfriend at that time was working. So I was just alone in a New York City apartment mm. for hours and hours, like can't go outside. Um, and I was just literally going crazy. And I was just scrolling on Facebook one day. And mm. there was an ad that said, learn how to produce in 30 days. And I was like, this is the um. stupidest thing. I went, I went to Berkeley, and I didn't learn how to produce there. I'm not going to produce in this online class or whatever i clicked on it and there was a sale it was like 75 bucks so i was like right. let me just take this class and i promise you because i had been using garage band for years doing the vocal arrangements for the shows uh -huh. the arrangements were like pretty intricate for what they were you know like we had to jump around all different parts and i'm like really pride myself on making like interest interesting like vocal arrangements and stuff like that and cool little mashups so i really knew garage band but producing always seems like rocket science mm. but once i learned how to program a drum pattern i was good i was like i can do yeah. this i can do this you know like once i figured out that i was like yes and then i just got really into it yeah. and then everything just like all tied together because like like you said i i have an entrepreneur like mindset i also mm -hmm. have 
well as background. So I was really figuring out a way that I can combine all of my talents and mm-hmm. I needed a product, but I needed a product that I could be creative about. So that's where the girl group came in. But then it was just kind of me doing a lot of work for like other people to read right. as well. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. Cause I can do everything on my own. I can be the captain of my ship. I can have products. I could be creative. Yes. And it all just kind of folded to like what it is now. I just think the most important thing is like, and this is what I tell people all the time is you need to have honest conversations with yourself about what it is you exactly want to do and what is it you exactly want to lead with, you know, because as a child, I was like, I'm going to be a performer. I'm going to be performing. Right. I did performing for so many years. And then I realized like, I, I don't want to run around for gigs anymore. Like I don't yeah. want it. And like, they can be really fun. Like it can be like you're singing and you're like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. Yeah. But there's times where you're like, no. And there's, those times are like not enough, you know, to make it worth it. I was a, I was a singer songwriter for yeah, years. Yeah, I was just going to say. And I don't know how I got so far because I was terrible at singing. But somehow I don't know I about did. this. Somehow. I've never heard it. I, I, I have a feeling he's probably pretty good and he's just being modest because. No, we will do the big That'll reveal one day. That job wasn't really a thing, like to be an influencer in this capacity. And so none of us really thought of that. But then as it started happening, we all went with it, which I think is really cool. And we were able to bring all these talents. And I think we've all probably i don't know if fabio has but i think we all have sales backgrounds too which is funny it's all like part of the package um and and yeah just that transformative because i never knew i always wanted to be an artist but i never knew that i was gonna you know run a coaching website and all these different things like you don't think that when you're a kid um but yeah and, and who knows what the future holds with all of us who knows what we're we'll doing in 10 years but uh that could actually be an interesting question too yeah i think it's all just about like being creative you know like i get called out all the time people saying like oh well you're not really like a music creator and i'm like well i mean splice i work with splice regularly making content right. I, like the content they hire me to do actually requires me to take their samples and build music like sure. not anybody can just be like do this you know it's not like i'm just sitting there pretty or whatever just being like pointing at something you know like i'm like i actually have to make music to do the content so i hate when people say that yeah, told I me mean, some pretty, pretty interesting stories on people hating on you on the past. Would you care to share, reshare? Some oh, of because they're quite. I mean, some of them are quite shocking. I was, my jaw was on the floor when you were telling me them last time. Yeah, I mean, like they just get like out outrageous. You know, I don't remember which one I've I've told you. I've I've duetted <laughs> and like stitched a few of them just because like yeah. they're hilarious. Like I don't know if you've re- like. Yeah. This guy recently just like trying to say that like I'm a terrible musician. Like he made like a three minute TikTok. He made two Whoa. three minute TikToks about how terrible I am. And he was just like, I just got blocked by this girl who's like just graduated from Berkeley. And I'm like, bro, I'm 32. I graduated <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> oh my God. Off. Like, and he's like, he's kind of like my dad's age. And like I showed him, I showed my dad this video. My dad's like, why would he do this? Like, why yeah. would somebody, like, I don't even understand the point of his video. Like, does he want people coming to my house with like pitchforks? Like, yeah, <laughs> but you can, tell this girl. <laughs> you can tell he's your dad's age because he made a three minute TikTok video expecting people to watch it. He clearly doesn't know how the bloody algorithm works, does he? <laughs> it was just well, so weird. That that could be an interesting topic to get into, like how you handle that. And you spoke a little bit on that, but I, I thought it'd be cool in general just to like have some of your tips for people who kind of, because like, again, y- you know, you had this kind of growth happen in a pretty quick amount of time. And like, basically, like maybe if you took a step back and you were to break down like what those kind of things you did were to get there, would you, I know you said creativity, but are there any kind of other like, you know, tips in your you know, work belt that or tools in your work belt that you use uh, that have helped you get to where you are today? I mean, I, I've become like a big nerd about social media and I'm Mm -hmm. very strategic about social media. So I think for me, it was just like really deciding like who my target audience is and like what kind of stuff they would want to see. Yeah. I feel like so many people like miss the mark on that. Like you guys are both really good at that, but so many people miss the mark at it and it doesn't really matter. I don't really focus on like going viral. In fact, mm. I've never gone viral. Like both of you have had videos. I've gotten way more views than I've ever had. 
I like literally don't go viral. I'm telling you. Wait, wait hold consistency. on a second. Hold consistency. On. No, I don't have what one video on. In- I don't have one video on Instagram with a million views. I don't even have one video on Instagram with like three hundred, like four hundred k. Well, yeah, but but that, that consistency, even because right? Because all of your videos just sh- were showing up on my feed endlessly. So that's virality right. to me. Because because I focus more about who sees my videos instead of mm. how many of course of course and that is and that's always what i try to preach to people like i like i know producers that i that i work with or help them with their social media and stuff and they have five thousand followers on tiktok which is which is not a lot for tiktok standards right but all of their work all of their artists and clients from tiktok and mm-hmm. that's what i try to show to people like you should be using this as a tool for whatever it is mm-hmm. you want to do instead of just focusing on like going viral or being like an influencer you know yeah. like metrics Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a really good point. And I, one thing about you that I really like is how you're able to work with brands, but also stay authentically yourself. And I think that is something to speak on because I think a lot of people think like if they work with brands that they're going to like sell out or they don't know how to do it without being salesy. And I think, you know, that's pretty common. Like I think most people struggle with that. How do you kind of approach that? How do you work with brands? How do you deal with, um, you know, staying, you know, being in charge of the creative content? Do you have any like methods that have worked with you or? I, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm very picky with the brands I work with everyone thinks I just like select anything I get, but like, I don't, I've gotten brands reach out to me about e-cigarettes, brain pills. Oh yeah. 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 Sure. You know, necklaces, tequila, like, wait, can you pass that brand on to me? (laughs) Tell them you got a much, they got a much better test subject. And I don't even do that. And even like a lot of the, like, you know, um, certain like music production startups and stuff, like they'll come to me and they'll offer me like a ton of money. Cause I've, I'm like, I learned early on that I'm a yes, I'm a yes person to work because Mm. I'm really nervous that work won't always be there. And I don't remember who told me this, but somebody told me this, um, don't say no to the project, say no to the budget. So I'll give like, I'll give kind of like a really intense number in my opinion. And if they say yes, then I'll be like, oh, I got to do it. But usually they won't. And especially with like startups and stuff, I'll be like, you're not ready for this commit yeah. we're not ready for this yet so so i i think it's mostly just like also being authentic with my audience and just making sure i don't just post right i don't just i'm not just out here just like just taking the bag i know people think that about me but it's not true i can make money doing anything i'm really good at sales i could i right. was on my way to be like a sales shark like i could sell anything Hell yeah but it's like i don't I don't want to just do this for the money. I'm focusing on like the right. big people in the community. So honestly, all of the brands I work with are brands that I know and love already, you know? So it was just like easy. Makes sense. So you work with the ones, I liked how you said that you also sometimes just pitch the, you know, price really high uh, and see what happens mm. because like, that's, that's a good way too to like know your worth and to not just be like, uh, like you said, like being, having that fear in the back of your mind that, oh, I better go low because well, who knows when the next time the brand's going to come. Like, I like how you have that abundant mindset. I, I want to know, and I'm going to put you on the spot creatively here. Let's say the e-cigarette brand did match your number. Let's say it was 3 million USD. I want okay. to sell me the e-cigarette. Oh, sell you the e-cigarette? <laughs> Okay. What is this like the Wolf of Wall Street where you have yeah, to sell yeah, the pen exactly. or whatever? There you go. Okay, so the trick with sales, and a lot of people don't know this, or oh, some people know this, but you need to find the pain point, right? Mm-hmm. So mm. that's what you need to be spending like the first bit of time getting to know somebody is the pain point. So if I was to sell you a cigarette or an e-cigarette, I'd be like, Fabio, do you smoke cigarettes? Sometimes. Okay. When when are you smoking cigarettes? Socially. And why probably only... when he's up at 4 a.m. DJ. Why do you only smoke it sometimes? Because I don't need to because I don't need to smoke them all the time. And why don't you want to? Oh god, I feel like I'm under so much creative pressure right now. This is this has gone the wrong way. I'm cut this out. I'll just show you like theoretically, I'd be trying sure. to get to your pain point. So like I know, okay, why do people smoke easily? Because they're unhealthy. Yeah, so then I could go into the thing where like, well, this e-cigarette, you can smoke it, it's way healthier, da 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 like you can still get the high that you want when you're going out to the clubs, but sure. getting the repercussions of the health. So then I can go into that or like dig into that. But basically like you need to find that. So one of my I'll give you an example just to 
close this argument for this not argument this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I worked at Equinox, which is like a luxury. Nice. Thing. You guys know it, right? There's mm -hmm. some in London too. Like a nice gym, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like an obscenely priced gym, like. Yeah. And you're already living in an, a very expensive city, usually or town, so it's just like another additional like two, three hundred dollars a month. So right. people would come in, and my job was to sell them a membership, and they would come in and like, let's say they'd say, "Oh, this is too expensive," and I'd be like, "Well." you can work out for free. Like you don't need to spend any money to work out. Like you can run right. outside, you can pump yourself, you know, you can, you can lift cans of tomatoes, whatever, right? Yeah. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? And they're like, no. And I'm like, but you want to lose 10 pounds, right? Sign up. <laughs> right. Know? So then you go into like selling them their, their dream. And, but I think the best part though, is that when it comes to the stuff that, cause like, I think all of us kind of worked in sales for things that we didn't necessarily totally love. Cause it, back in the day, it was like a job, but now that we kind of are the job because we're selling like our own knowledge and we know the experience of what it's like to be our own boss and what it's like to excel in the thing that we actually truly love. I think it's a different type of sale as well though, because like we truly believe in what we're, we're, you know, in the stuff that we're telling people about to a point that it's like the trick is that it's not even a sale at that point. It's literally just like giving uh, that kind of like positive vibes and, and showing, you know, what can happen. And I think that that's the special part is when you can do that because otherwise it doesn't obviously feel as fulfilling uh, as it could. We want to give special thanks to Boombox for allowing this collaboration to happen and bringing myself and Lucas together. And don't forget to check out Boombox to start your collaboration now. So our out of the box question for today is where would you live if you didn't live in the city you live now? So if you could live anywhere else in the world, where would it be? Bonus points if you say London. No, there's no sunshine there. <laughs> there you go. We have great summers, okay? Great summers. With no air conditioning, you'll love it. London is like the grandfather of New York. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Whoa. It's pretty boop, well said. Boop, boop, boop. I would be like on some sort of like tropical place. So maybe mm -hmm. like maybe like an island in Greece. I Ooh. love Greece. Fabio. Where are you gonna live? Mexico, obviously. No, I don't know. I mean, I like Mexico, but I don't know if it's like. Don't drink the water. <laughs> I mean, I love Southeast Asia. Ooh. I've always I've always had this idea of living in Thailand somewhere. I mean, same idea as I, I think I because I've been close to the Mediterranean my whole mm. life. It would be nice to explore elsewhere, but similar vibes: beachfront villa open studio a walk to the beach you know waves crashing in the background the tough one for me is because we travel all the time and that's like our thing is i love all these different places and i don't i've actually gotten to the point now where i don't know physically if i can settle in the same place for too long at a time without getting restless because that's like our routine now like we get to a point where we both are just kind of like yeah we could go now and studio studio like yeah yeah, I do. And that's the thing is like, now we're at the point where it's like, well, maybe we could get, a, you know, like a, a place that's like more of a, a headquarters, but maybe not just in one location, maybe at least two. So maybe it would be like one in the UK potentially and one uh, on the East Coast US. So that's kind of where we're leaning. But um, there, yeah, there's so many places around the world that are super cool. For so long, I was like struggling financially that no matter, mm -hmm. how, I think I was talking, talking to this to Fabio, like no matter mm -hmm. how much money I make, like, I still feel like, I think like I right. have, I behave like I have nobody. I mean, I'm the same. I've had to learn to break out of that and be, and like, Fabs, stop being so cheap, man. You only live <laughs> once. You can't take it with you. There's, there's a That's platter so of funny. experiences. You just got to go for it. I kind of, I, I feel that. I grew up with, I grew up with very little money as well. And I've always been this like <laughs> little entrepreneur kid. And even when I was a kid, I was like doing everything I could to, cause like my family would all be getting food on like the dollar menu at the, you know, the Burger King or whatever. And I would find a way to make enough money to where I could get the value meal. Like I wanted the fries and the, the, you know, the, the, the other stuff. And so I've always kind of uh, just been kind of, but I get really excited about it. And and uh, I just love that we get to, like I said, again, that we get to work in, in what we actually like now, because for the longest time doing anything I could and now actually be able to make it happen. I think it's quite safe to say that the majority of producers in the industry are male. 
And what do you think is causing that imbalance? What are the boundaries uh, or sorry, yeah. the barriers to entry that you think maybe females might be facing? Well, see, this the other hard part about answering this question is like I I've been I've been in the industry for 10 years, right? Like mm. so the women that are coming into it now, it's changed so much. Like it's way more accepting. I see way more female producers. I see even way more females on like making producing content on like TikTok and Instagram. So it's not like I don't feel like I'm the only one anymore. Mm. And there's so many like cool. organizations now and stuff. Now 10 years ago, like if I would walk right room full of like jazz musicians you know because at that time I was doing a lot of like jazz singing nobody would look at me like not even acknowledge my presence right mm. I wouldn't even exist <laughs> you know until yeah you know, somebody would be like oh send me a thong pic or x y right. right so it's like and these are my colleagues but it's changed so much now in like a good way yeah and you look at those like people you know that guy that i told you about that made the video about me he was like he literally did this in the video she claims she's a <laughs> music producer you know and it's like yep i have a daw i have a midi keyboard i have a microphone i have speakers like i'm putting in sound into it right you, i didn't say i'm a grammy award-winning producer I, right. i'm a music producer. like it, it doesn't really take that much to claim that title you know sure. so i just feel like there's always going to be that um people are always going to like sexualize my posts, which is crazy because I, I don't act sexual at all. And <laughs> then I think I act like completely opposite, you know, like I'll post a logic pro tip and someone will be like, I want to auto tune your boobs or something. And I'm like, oh, mm. good one, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, I'm embarrassed for you to post that for people to see. That yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited that like what you said about how it's gotten so much better in the last 10 years. So I guess that gives us hope because obviously like in the next 10 years, who knows how far we can take it. And I like that, um, you know, that, that good things are happening. I think one thing that could be cool is too, is to maybe share like maybe to anyone struggling, like if you have any tips on like how you dealt with all those things over the last 10 years, or I don't know that that's a big topic, but maybe if you could just bolt. You yeah. Know. I think, I think ultimately like, it doesn't matter if it's like Drake in your inbox. Like you need mm. to surround yourself with people that make you feel good about yourself. Mm. And if somebody that has, you know, more success in you, but wants you around, but is making you feel some sort of way, cut right. them off. Like cut mm. them off. There's enough people in this industry that you could surround yourself with people that don't treat you that way. But when I was younger, I would, I would definitely stick around in situations that I shouldn't have because I felt like they could help me or I felt right. like, they have something to offer and like the whole exchange is just like terrible you know right <laughs> so it's like it doesn't matter how talented they are how successful they are this goes your happiness goes beyond just being successful you just need to put yourself in the right in the right situations and now because of the internet like you have you can connect with people all over the world you know yeah and i'm not, not going to work with you know men for sure i think yeah think of me in any other way and then just a colleague really right friend. that goes with the saying you are the sum of the five people that you have right around you right closest to you i, I think it's so true what you're saying when i was 10 years ago when i was a singer songwriter and i was having a lot of success uh i can happily say that those people that i was hanging out with i'm no longer hanging out with. right they were only friends with me for because they latched onto the fact that there was a chance that i could be successful so they were trying to help me based on that and there was no deep connection. I think as soon as you build deep connections with people, it's sort of all those vanity metrics that we were talking about earlier yeah. start to become irrelevant because you realize that like you can learn so much from not just working, but being friends with that individual where you can be vulnerable and you can express your ideas and your opinions. And yeah. I guess that kind of leads me on to my next question because I think like, you know, Sabrina, you and I connected very uh, very well like the first time we met I think there was like a, you know like an instant spark and one of the things that one of the topics that we would share and you know, we, we kind of joke about it every so often is you know content creator therapy sessions <laughs> um, and I, I I wondered if you could maybe share any experiences that made you want to bow out made you want to oh, quit and, and how you overcame them mm. uh, so many things that make I mean 
nothing that we do is is easy right and right even a win you know like even and you you guys probably can attest to it like even when like a project goes well or a gig goes well or a video does well or you've made a, a bunch of money on one thing it's just a fleeting moment right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's not this is not a linear process this isn't like oh we get this thing and then we get this thing and then we get this thing and then we get this thing like it's an up sure. and down thing and something i learned early on like one of my first cruise ship contracts i was um the piano player in the band was like a lot older than me like in his 60s i, I want to say or maybe not that old but he was older mm -hmm. than me and he told me sabrina no gig lasts forever and mm. that kind of like really clicked with me so maybe that's why i always feel like again like this poor mentality because i'm like this can all be gone in a second you know like i have to save i have to plan so i live with that like ptsd why do i continue with it i continue with it because i love it you know like i love mm. what i do and i know that like i always say like music didn't like i didn't choose music music picked me <laughs> like i wish mm -hmm. i could have like wanted to be a veterinarian you know like that would have been so awesome <laughs> <laughs> you get to I help animals and you get to get paid a, bolt, a buttload of money to do it like yes you know but unfortunately alas this is what i'm doing so you yeah know. i was gonna say I, I see you i see your future being very bright though i think that uh it has nothing to do with luck or any of those kind of things it just shows over the years of what you've done and your mindset um and i think that's what everyone kind of can get out of this podcast is that it all, you know, comes from up here and in your heart and that, you know, no matter what happens, whether it's COVID or it's this or it's that, like that's what steers you towards being able to have those opportunities come your way and being able to make the most of them. I just think ultimately like hard work triumphs talent, you know, and so and creativity. Yeah, for sure. People will say, oh, hard work isn't enough, but I really feel like if you try enough times and you you listen and you focus and learn from your mistakes and learn different stuff. Like for instance, like with my girl group, the New York, her, the, I won't even say the name, but I spent like, I invested so much money into yeah. it before we made a dollar. And with this venture, I was like, no, like not today, Satan. Like I am not investing anything until like, I was so DIY. I've only just started paying for things that I like need. <laughs> So yeah, it's like you learn from your mistakes and like now I'm like so in the green that it doesn't hurt as bad when I like spend, you know, 200 jobby or whatever. I'm right. On. That's it for today. And don't forget boombox.io is giving away $500 this month towards your studio gear. And all you have to do to enter is comment below. And the question of the day is, what would you do if money was no object? What would you get for your studio? And make sure to subscribe below. And if you want to get in touch with Sides, AKA Sabrina, go to the link in the description below where you can find all of her details. And if you want to get in touch with Fabio, it is at noise underscore London. And for me, it's at music by Lucas. And of course, at boombox.io is where you're going to find Boombox. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Peace.